what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today we're here with Monica Guidry. Now, I'm glad she joined us on the show today. She is a lifestyle strategist, and I wanted to talk to her just a you know a little bit, you know about you know just her expertise and you know what you know we can actually learn from her today and um, her advice on some things maybe we should be doing. So, Monica, thank you for joining us on the show today. Thanks for having me, Phil. I'm so glad to be here. Okay, Monica, can you just tell people just a little bit, you know, about yourself and, and how you got to the point that you started doing lifestyle strategy? Sure. Um, well, I'm, I'm a mother. I'm a wife of uh, 20 years. Um, uh, there have been a lot of different scenarios that have happened in my life that have led me down the road of creating systems that help people overcome situations that I myself have overcome, um, namely when my husband and I first got married, we were told that we would never be able to have children. And because my faith is extremely uh, important in my life, I didn't take that as an answer for me. So uh, we continue to believe uh, lots of lots of procedures and medication and trial and errors. And eight years later, my first son was born, Warren Benjamin Guidry. And then uh, a couple of years later, I had a, a daughter and um, actually, about two months after I had her, there was a home invasion and a man broke into my house and attempted to, to take my life with a knife. And he would have succeeded and would have taken my life in front of my two children if I did not fight back physically. I had to physically fight back. And what seemed like hours, um, I ended up fighting for my life, taking the knife from him, holding it to his neck until he uh, ran out of my house. Um, so situations like that, um, where I was ridden or ri gripped with fear and had to get myself out of a place of fear where I told myself, you know what, I know what fear feels like. It feels like a cloak. It feels like something that's choking me. I never want to feel this again. So I fought and overcame fear. And then I started teaching people how to overcome fear as well. So it's different scenarios that you can consider as tr tri a tragedy to triumph situations where I just felt like I wouldn't, I'm not going to give up here. And so because I did not give up, I started writing down the different things that I started that I did to overcome. And then privately, I would consult people and give other people strategies on how to break free of situations that they were themselves going through in them live, their lives. So it brings me to this point here where I'm continuing to do that to this day. And I, I take great joy in being able to do that. Now, that when you had that situation happen, that break in after that happened, Mm -hmm. Um, what, what changed for you? Did you, you know, start maybe practicing your second amendment, right? So what did you do to say, you know what, I'm not going to be a victim of this again? You know what? I did not. I, I'm just now starting to, um, research having my carry conceal a weapons license. But at the time, what I did was I literally had to, to wake up every day, um, and, state affirmations over myself and declarations over myself that I would not live in fear. I would not live in fear. I remember repeating that the very next day after the incident happened, I repeated that probably a hundred or a thousand times. Um, and then after that, all, I, what I would, I, I don't say that I, I operate in fear because fear is something that is, I have eliminated from my vocabulary and my life. But what I've started to do is I've become more aware so whereas I would normally sit with my back facing a door or um, or an exit, I don't do that anymore. I face the exit. I know where every entrance and exit is. I can tell you what a person looks like, their description to a T. It's just different things like that that have made me vigilant versus being fearful. Okay, so now you look at in, in our community, you know, which we deal with a lot of, of issues and mm -hmm. And I know some issues that other communities do not deal with. Um, one of them could be fear. Uh, definitely one of them could people could feel like they're oppressed sure. um, in a system that feel like it's choking us out. Mm -hmm. um, when, you know, when it comes to us, especially in the time of the coronavirus, um, uh, what advice do you have you know, for us in that time period? Because some people you know, are unsure. Some people lost jobs. Some wow. people put in a position, do I have to send my kids back to school and I figure out they're going to catch the coronavirus or do I stay home and homeschool? Now, what direction do you kind of see, you know, for our community? You know, 
and it's not like that I, I'm the voice of all people, but I can I can only speak for from my point of view and what's helped with people that I've spoken to in situations like this. Fear is a real thing. Um, and those feelings are real. So I would say first, you know, uh, acknowledge how you're feeling, process it, give yourself permission to do those things. And then after you've done those things, sit down and decide and make a choice to either continue in that direction or pick up where you're at and move on in a place of joy or contentment and solution. There, there are many people that are going through the same things that we are in our community. And I can assure you, there are people that are overcoming. So link with people like that. Reach out to people who seem to, um, to, seem to have a, a, a pattern for their lives and have get, get, gathered their footing and are going towards a goal. And you can see that happening in their lives and ask them what their strategies are to obtain that. For me, it's waking up with gratitude. Every day I wake up with gratitude and I tell myself, I'm happy for this day. I'm excited for this day. I believe in affirmations. I said that before I do affirmations. I have gratitude. And also, again, acknowledging how I feel, where I'm at in that moment, allowing myself to process it and then deciding to take another route. Okay, so another question I have is is recently you know, we've seen all the buzz, and maybe you have not seen it. Um, you know, Cardi B just dropped a video uh, that was making the style. You know, I don't know if you saw it or yeah. heard about the buzz behind it. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing this up to you, you know, mm -hmm. because you specialize in you know talking to women about different things. You know, sometimes when men say things, it's come across a certain way. And you're a woman who's been married twenty years, correct? Sure. Yes, I have. Okay. So as a woman, as a, as a mom, you know, as a wife and just, just looking out, um, what is your, your take on, you know, this culture that's basically saying it's okay just to promote literally, uh, you know, uh, prostitution or just a culture that's just something that I, I haven't really seen put on the mainstream like this. Um, and, and it looks like it's being so normalized to our younger sisters. And I'm and it's like, it's just, it's like leading them, in my opinion, to a path of destruction because I don't think they can attain what you have, you know, being a woman, being married 20 years, going down that route. Well, that's just my opinion. But what is your take on this culture? Well, there, that was that's kind of loaded. There's a lot of things in that uh, in that question. So for myself, I don't I don't like to put my uh, I don't want my views and my opinions to be someone's. Uh, oh, what is the word conviction? Um, but for me, I have certain convictions and there's certain things that uh, how I want to live my life um, that won't allow me to do certain things. Um, with that being said, in my household, there are certain rules and, uh, and one of them is op opposing uh, a lifestyle that's like that. Now, I don't have the right to tell another woman what to do with their body or what to watch or or how to live it. I can only say that what would be best for you is to embrace your femininity in another way where you're not being so revealing and 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 so out there. But I will say this: there's two there's two there's two sides to this. I grew up. I came up in the '90s, and I remember Luke. Do you remember Luke? Oh yes, I remember Luke yeah. definitely. Remember Rex and Effects, Pumps and Above? I remember all that. Okay, so we we grew up where the, yeah, that was our, a part of our culture. And we cannot deny that we did, we have seen things like that growing up. But here's the thing, we grew up. When I was young, I did what I was supposed to do when I was young, but when I became a man and a woman, we put away those childish things. Sometimes we cannot expect people who are younger, even in mind, to think on a level of a man or a woman. And there's just some things in our society that keeps us stuck in those patterns. And, uh, you know, uh, videos like Cardi B and even other things out there feed into the immaturity of, of where these people are. But here's the thing, we can't tear down the level in which they're on. You gotta meet them where they are. So I would just say, you know, eventually you gotta come up. You'll come up. They'll come up. I can just tell you how I, how I view and live my life. Okay. So, but, it, and I'm not saying your, your convictions are, are what they are. And like okay. I said, and I, and I come from the guys of a father, 
uh-huh. you know, look, looking at, okay, these are young sisters out here. Yeah. And, you know, that kind of um, you know, influence. And I know that influence also comes from, you know, the powers that be as well. Sure. Um, that's for sure. But, you know, for me, it is bothersome because I, I, it's more to a woman than physical attributes. Sure. And if they expect to have families, um, we, I don't really think that, you know, they want families eventually. But do you think there's certain things that could be done to kind of ruin that down the line? That can, I, I think I think what it what it does is it creates trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, what, it, what, it, what it's doing is it's planting seeds and it will t- it's going to take harder work to p- uproot them, the, the seeds that are being planted. But I don't, I don't, I don't want to say that it will ultimately, you know, destroy their future. It, I just know that it's going to take a lot of work to uproot what's being planted. You think of a, you think of a flower garden and you think of weeds that grow in there. You got to really dig in there and get to the root and pull it up before you, the garden can continue to flourish. So these, these young girls out here and, and women um, that are, the having these seeds that are planted, it's going to take a lot of work to uproot them, but I'm not going to say that their future is going to be, you know, um, it's going to stop the process of be, being able to be married or ben- the benefits and the fruits of thereafter. It's just going to take work to uproot what's being planted. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm not saying that you can be condemned to a life of sorrow. I'm not saying that. I, yeah. I'm just saying that just from what I've noticed about life is that certain decisions you make can make things a little bit more difficult for right. you five years, 10 years, 15 years out of the line. Which is what I'm saying about the, the roots. You got to it, it takes work to dig that stuff up, you know, and, you know, it, it takes it'll take time. And once that does happen, then they can live a life of you know, the benefits of living a good life thereafter. But, you know, uh, it, 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 it does take work. It does take work. And what's happening right now, I, I do really feel bad for the people that are watching it. But then I, I you know, it's like, well, who's in their lives that are, that are guiding them? You know, if they don't have the proper people, parentals or mentors in their lives to kind of steer them away from that, then, then this is what's expected. So then there's a call to action for us, for people like us to get involved in the community or to link up or to mentor with young, young women and young girls to kind of let them know that this is you, this. There's more for you. Right. So when you look at children, you, you have your children, which are your, your blessings, your children. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you look at your children growing up in a, you know, you know, the loving, you know, two parent household. Sure. And we look at some of our children are growing up w- without, you know, what your children is experiencing. Mm-hmm. Do you believe that bring a certain amount of uh, loss or maybe different experiences? Because that's a real issue in our community it with is. our children not having two parents. It is. It is. Um, so you're asking me, do I feel like that there is, um, because there aren't two parent homes that there's, a negative negative or a harder a harder life for for children that are growing up like that is that the question in 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 a sense in other words like your children your children is basically getting a balance right you know you have you you have your husband right Mm -hmm. and versus you know some of our children that are born you know into like i said children are are born they they don't not control any situation Mm -hmm. but they don't have the the balance and you know, we look at statistics. Statistics show that things just are the best, you know, when they don't have, you know, the proper balance. So what I'm saying is, as a lifestyle strategist, you know, how could those children, for instance, that grow up in that situation, they become men, they become young women, yeah. um, what could be the proper guidance for them? Because you know, part of them is kind of like lost a little bit. Yeah, the same thing that I would say to an adult that's stuck somewhere in their life. You got to find out where. Did the roadblock happen and then discover a way out of there to receive some type of wholeness. So forgiving, forgiveness, forgiveness is a big thing, you know, forgiveness. And then after you've uprooted or you're figuring out forgiveness, your hands are free to then receive something else to receive maybe a mentor or someone that can guide you towards um, towards where you want to be or and heal the area 
of, of lack or loss or whatever um, happened in your childhood that has um, caused you to be stagnant or stuck. A lot of times um, children that come up from those in those situations, there's a lot of hurt behind that um, when there's when there's an absence and abandonment issues creep in, rejection can creep in, lots of things can creep in to make a person stuck. So although they're growing in age, they're still stuck at that at that age where where the impediment happened. So I would say there again, find out what that area is that's making you stagnant or stuck and then find freedom in that, whether it's you know, some inner healing, um, reaching out to, um, you know, a pastor or someone, um, someone that can help you unblock those, unblock those areas so that you can, so that you can live a life of, of wholeness and freedom. Well, you know, one thing that, you know, that, that really, I'm going to say affected everybody is, is watching, um, in real time, literally the, um, lynching of George Floyd. I mean, everyone saw that mm-hmm. and it affected people all over the world. Yeah. But especially, you know, within the uh, black community, we, we have been seeing like over and over and over, you know, murder of, of black people. For instance, like Philando Castile, we saw all that, you know, like that video in real time, you know, when that came out um, over and over and over. We've been watching the death after death after death after death. Now, yeah. as a lifestyle strategist mm-hmm. and, and no other community really watched this amount of death really done by the state like we have in our black community. Right. How can we really get to a place of healing when we're constantly seeing this stuff done to us as a group? Wow. We, I, it always comes down to this very thing. We have to decide. We have to decide where we want to be. We have to, we have to see the end goal. Do we want to, because first of all, here's another thing we have to be in touch with how we're really feeling because there's lots of anger that's developed being developed. There's lots of sadness. There's lots of depression. There's lots of um, unanswered, um, unanswered questions that leave us perplexed. So we have to tap into how we are really feeling. And then once we find out how we're really feeling, then dig in there and decide whether or not we're going to stay or find solution to get out. We, I believe, like I tell my children every night before they go to bed, their solution. We are solution. And in order for us to be solution, we have to solve the problem that's on the inside of us. And the problem is, is there's a lot of trauma that is happening because of all of these different situations and scenarios. So we got to get to the bottom line. And once we get to the bottom line, decide that we're going to come out and be solution to our community, then our city, and then this world. Other than that, we're just going to be a stuck people. We're going to be angry and frustrated and fearful for what? Well, it, it just, just my opinion. Um, and maybe you can correct my opinion on something. Sure. I, I believe personally, you can't fully heal until you get to an area w- where you're away from the trauma, where you can heal. Well, would that be safe to say? I mean, sure. I mean, th- so when certain, I'm, I'm considered as an, an empathetic person. Mm-hmm. When I start feeling the weight of other people and other situation and things, I have to pull away. So that that's either shutting down social media that, um, you know, not watching so much news and media kind of cutting off, um, if you will, or tying a knot at the source that's bleeding into the state of my 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 the, the weight of it. So I think drawing back and stealing away. Sure, that's something that you can do, but eventually you're going to have to face it. And so how do you how to so just to kind of. Put the question back on you. Where would you where would you still away to? And then how long before you have to really face what's going on? Well, if you if you want to put me, for instance, for me, a great yeah. place of, um, um, you know, really healing for me and relaxation is the continent of Africa for me. Sure. Um, okay. First time I went, I, I didn't feel the, the uh, weight um, and the oppression of America on my shoulders. Sure. I yeah. felt like a human being. I didn't feel like somebody black because everybody looked like me. <laughs> um, and every time I'm there, I'm happy. I, I don't deal with the racism. 
I don't deal with all the issues and problems. But then the moment I came back the first time to America, I literally felt that weight come right back the moment I got back to this country. Sure. And sure, I could deprocess. Yeah. But I look at all of this news and I look at all. And I'm like you. I feel like when I see the George Floyd, when I see the situation by Breonna Taylor, when I, yeah. you know, I feel like, hey, this could be, you know, this is my brother. This is my sister. Yeah. And the, the reason why I asked you that question is because it's not like, you know, say this, say like something we're doing to cause any of this. Sure. It, it's, it's more so like the people that literally have a hatred of me and you just for us existing. For the sake of existing. You know what I'm saying? And, and and I was just asking that question because I firmly believe we as a community cannot heal in America like we could if we was removed away from this toxic system that uh -huh. literally has a hatred for us just for living. Yeah. I, I I love the continent of Africa as we were sharing off off screen. You know, I, I've been to South Africa and it was beautiful. The people were beautiful. It was the most humble place and it felt like home. Um, but then my my thing to what you're saying is if we were to uproot ourselves and, and move to a place that of familiarity, a place that that makes us feel comfortable to a place from a place that we've built. We uh, black people have fought in every single war. We built this country. So to then leave a place that I have built behind because there are people that are afraid of my existence and afraid of my power. That's like giving, that's like giving it all to them. And I refuse, I refuse in any situation or anybody that I love to run from anything, not that we're running. So for lack of a better expression, expression to run and, and go, go somewhere. Um, when I stake my claim, like this is, this is, this belongs to me, whether you, the person that's trying to oppress me understands or believes that or not. I know, but I, I, there again, I'm, the continent of Africa is amazing. It's beautiful. There, there are people, it's home, but uh, there's a sense of me that says, sure, I, I'm going to go, I'll, I'll go and visit my place, my place of familiarity, but I'm not going to run from, from where I'm staking my claim. Does that make sense? It, it, it makes sense. It makes sense to, you know, well, I guess, I guess now we're about to have a, a little different conversation. It okay. makes sense to people that's like hunkered down in this place. Okay. Yes, but, you know, one brother told me that I did an interview with and, and, okay. and may he rest in, in, in peace, uh, our brother Armin Ra. Mm -hmm. He said to me, and I never forget it. He says, okay. black people in America always say that we built America. He said, yes. And say, and we can build here in Africa too. Why is it that we only relegated to building one thing? He yeah. said, we can build again. Like, and my thing is, if you build a house okay. and you have no control of this house, mm -hmm. to me, that makes me more angry because we have built it. Yes, I'm with you 100%. My ancestors were slaves, no different than your ancestors were slaves in this land. We did everything. We mm -hmm. innovated America. We still innovating America. And yet when we look up, people that look like me and you aren't in control of nothing. Mm. And if you're not in control of nothing, then how can we sit up here and just say with pride, we built it and we built it involuntarily. It's not like we came over here and made a deal with people and say, hey, yes, you know, we come from the continent. We're going to build this great nation. We built it involuntarily. Sure. We did. So what, what I'm saying is looking at what's happening in this country now. Mm -hmm. Looking at who's controlling it. Look at who's the president. Look at what's happening to black women, you know, in this country. Look what happened to black men in this country. And yet other people could still come in over you and me, mm -hmm. get over us by design through the government. And, and my thing is this, you know, without us, we are literally the glue is holding a lot together. I was in this, is my opinion, I believe <laughs> if enough of us would go build, and mm -hmm. rebuild Black Wall Street on the continent, rebuild everything we had on the continent. I just think that we would be a lot better, in my opinion. But you know, that's why it, it's, we. I guess we have a difference of opinion on that on that subject. And, and we and we can we we can absolutely can. You're still you're still my brother. I still love you. Um, I, I just think there are there's a community of people here in Columbus, Ohio, mm -hmm. uh, where I'm from. Uh, it's the there's a you probably have one in, from where you're at also, but it's sure. a. It's um it's called Columbus Black Business Owners. 
Mm -hmm. And it's reached about 7,000 people over the past, I don't know, a few weeks. It's not been around very, very long. But what's happened with that community um, is it was developed after all of the George Floyd happened, all of that, and Black people saying, you know what? Enough is enough. We got to come together and create something for ourselves. And because of that, that group, there's a bank that's about, a Black-owned bank that's about to be launched. There's people that are about to um, own, uh, I believe it's a, a, a gas station. So it's different things like that that make me say, you know what, I understand that there's a lot of disparities and a lot of negative things that have happened to black people. But one thing that I understand for sure, when we have had enough, this is what happens. What I'm seeing right now in my own community, when we say we gotta come together and create something that is ours, you see things like this happening that we, we've never had a black, black owned bank here in our, in our city, but it's about to happen. Well, never a gas station, but it's about to happen. And sometimes, sometimes amazing things are bred out of something that happened that was negative, but I'm seeing it. So you can absolutely do it right here where you're from, where you're at. You can stake your claim, do what you need to do um, and come up. Well, Miss Monica is, uh, you know, on my position, like say I've, you know, definitely, you know, have business here. Mm -hmm. I've done great here in America. I can't say yeah. I haven't um, yeah. as, as a as a black man. My, I guess my just I, I'm just really frustrated I because tell. I just look at I just I'm constantly looking at, you know, data. I'm looking at what's mm -hmm. happening. And I know the, the reason why we're held back financially is not because we're just lazy or we're oh. not smart or nothing like that. It's that literally the powers that be find every way to sabotage black business. For instance, mm -hmm. they won't give black business a loan. Um, versus a white business. Um, they would deny a black business credit over a white business. Not to say they had a better business plan or whatever. We're talking about the exact same uh, requirements, right? We can look at home ownership. We can look at uh, criminal justice. We can look at every area that's permeated. This, this country is built off of the oppression of you know people that look like me and you. Right. And I, I guess it just, I, I'm just, I'm, a lot of times I'm just so frustrated because it, it, it's, I just see it's like for hundreds of years we've had people have fought and died literally, right, you know, right. for our freedoms. Right. Mm -hmm. And yes, we're not in the same position as they may have been in the 1900s mm -hmm. or even the 1960s, but we still see a George Floyd happen. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, a fundamental change just happening in America, which is, which is, we see everybody seeing it, whether they like it or not. Um, but what I'm saying is maybe maybe you could talk to me. What, how do you address the frustrated people like myself? Because people like me are just frustrated with the whole thing. Yeah. But I don't see an end to it. My thing is, if I saw an end to it, that'd be maybe a, give me a little bit more of a hope. But for me, I guess, you know, I'm getting to a point. I'm like, look, forget this. You okay. know what I'm saying? But maybe you could direct me. I, I don't okay. know. <laughs> so the very first thing uh, you heard me say it, I've said it a, a thousand times probably just now is feel what you're feeling. It's OK to feel what you're feeling, first of all. And then after you felt what you felt, what does your end picture look like? You say that you can't see it, but I'm sure you have a, a very good imagination. What would that look like for you? What would, you, what would a non-frustrated person look like for you here in America? What would that look like for you? Non-frustrated person in America for me would be, see at least the majority of my community uh, I'm talking about for my community, not myself personally. Sure. Myself personally, I'm not frustrated in my personal life at all. Right, right. I'm, I'm a happy camper. I, but I'm yeah. talking about for my community. Yeah. I like to see us no different than any other group. Have you know the majority of our businesses you know created by us, serve us. Mm -hmm. um, you know we're not dealing with the oppression. Um, we all like I say just coming together, just doing everything we need to do, educating our children as our children should be educated. Right. Um, you know, taking a stand as we need to take a stand, building our own communities, doing it for self. Mm -hmm. that, that's my main thing. And I just don't personally like us in a position where we're always looking toward these people for everything, or you look at the Asian community, our community, they don't be looking at oh, we need a politician to save us, or we need to go vote. They don't care about that. They care about building an economy okay. uh, for their people. That's why I can care less who's the president. And that's so, kind of like what I want us to be. Okay. So you said you said a few things. So you said that you want to see um, 
you started telling me what you wanted to see in your community. Are you seeing any of those things at all? Not on a large scale, but just at all. Sure, on the smaller scale, scale in pockets, yes. So you're asking me what I would say to you. So I would say focus on that. Fo focus on focus on that, and then continue to do your part because I'm sure you're doing your part. I know you. I know you're doing your part because I can hear the passion in your voice. And for a person that has that much passion, I can't see you just sitting on your hands. So I would say focus on exactly what's what you see happening in your compute community and be grateful that there's progress moving because if, if there's nothing happening, that means no progress. But if there's something happening, that means there's progress. So concentrate on the progress and continue to lay your piece of the puzzle down. Change is inevitable. Change is inevitable and it just takes one person and you're doing your part and you see in your community small, even if it's small, that there's progress and there's movement. So I was saying focus on that and continue looking forward. Oh, yes. And definitely I got to look forward because, you know, and also I, when I talk about the content and, and, and people don't understand that the bigger picture, I guess it's like so many resources there and you went there. There's so much resources there we're not connected to could even help us here in America. Yeah. And that everyone else is running to the continent, Chinese, uh, Lebanese, whoever else running there, right. literally. Right. Yeah, we're still fighting each other about going to the continent. I mean, like we, we're fighting every tooth and nail about, you know, this place. And I'm like, I guess that's what frustrates me, too. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, why are you fighting for this when yet yeah, you can literally take what you have here? Mm -hmm. You like what you do. You can literally go to South Africa, mm -hmm. replicate what you have mm -hmm. probably times 10. Without, yeah. without probably not much pushback. Sure. Um, <laughs> you know, I really can't, I can't speak for, I can't speak for a lot of people, but I, I mean, I can tell that I can tell you're frustrated about it. And I know the beauty of what our, con the, what, what Africa is. I know the beauty of it. I've been there. I've seen it. I've experienced it. I've tasted it. I mean, and I, I want to go back. Definitely want to go back. Do I want to live there? No, but I definitely, um, it's it's a place that I, I call a second home. And I'm not sure why why China, well, I know why, because it's rich with all kinds of of, of, of greatness. And so they see it and they want to run towards it and, and and buy it up as much as they can. And I think I think they're they're doing a lot of that. And I, I wanna know, I want what I wanna know. I'm I'm sorry, this is taking a little route, but when I when I see stuff like that happening, I wanna know. The Africans that that live there, why is it that 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 it's easy for them to do? Because me and you are they? there to to um, stand in the gap. Say it again. Because me, people like me and you aren't there. The people who actually can have made it in America, mm -hmm. no business, no how, and also know the the ways of a colonizer. Mm -hmm. We're not there to help you know participate in that business and also uh, teach that knowledge. Um, and to stop that from happening. That's why. And it, and I've been told this multiple times by uh, really? different Africans. Wow. That we have a knowledge that they need on the continent. And mm -hmm. they have told me to my face, we rather do business with you guys, not with the Chinese, mm -hmm. not with uh, white people who in, anything else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but they say that what, what can we do at this point and say we don't have people come. Now people are trying to come back. Yes. Oh, but, yeah. you know, prior to prior to that, they didn't have any of that. You know, mm -hmm. so I just look at it just as a prime opportunity to uh, for us just to 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 grow and and they they I know they they was happy to see you and and, and that's fine. And I, I tell people all the time, you don't have to listen. We got ties to America. My family's here. Your family's here. Yeah. My right. family, your family. You know, fought in wars. You know, like you said, built America involuntarily. But yes, you would never have a, just disappear away from America. I always say, be in both places. You know, you can be on the continent and mm -hmm. be here. That, you know, I say people think, oh, you say go to Africa. I got to leave. No, it's just not realistic. OK. OK. So there I have a this is this is a great point. I, there's a, another really good friend of mine who has a, a not for profit organization called Mothers Helping Mothers. Mm -hmm. And what it is, it's a, a single moms and they provide um, different uh, like clothing and um you know, diapers and formula and different things like that for for that mother for those mothers that are that are like that or in need. And she just launched her not for profit in I want to say, I don't believe she's in South Africa yet. I believe she's in they're in Kenya, some either Kenya or Nigeria. I mean, so I mean, there are people that are that are doing that. And if I if I had a, some type of a service that I could 
do business there also and just provide provide some sort of expertise there, I would absolutely do it. When I go, um, the last time that I went, I spoke about turning pain into passion. And there were about, there were a room, probably about 80 to 100 women in that room. And I got to share and hear their stories of, of the different traumas and things that they went through. And I gave them tools and tips on how to turn that uh, for their good. So, I mean, there's, when I go, I'm able to do things like that. Um, so when you say that makes more sense to me, when you say um, we don't necessarily have to live there to, to be there, that makes sense to me. And I, and I agree wholeheartedly about that. Well, I always tell people this, just have an option. Don't, mm -hmm. don't be stuck. In other words, like if you get so bad, you like, you know what? Uh, I'm out. I'm not going to deal with this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Cause a lot of other communities have that option except black America. It's kind of like they cut us off mm -hmm. and we don't have no other option, but it's, that's a great story. And yes, you can make a difference on the continent, but Ms. Monica, could you tell people, um, how could they, you know, cause they ask some questions for you or maybe they want some, some lifestyle strategist, uh, coach. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to use the word coaching, but right. um, how can I get to your website and, and different things that you have? Sure. Um, thanks again, Phil. Uh, they can reach out to me at uh, www.monicacgidry.com. And I'm on all social media platforms as Monica C. Gidry. On Instagram, it's Monica C. Gidry one. And I would absolutely love to, to talk to your followers and, and people that uh, get have the beautiful opportunity to watch your show. So and they can definitely reach out to me that those ways. All right, Miss Monica, we definitely thank you, you know, for coming on today and, and having having that discussion. And um, like, like I said, you know, it, it was great to talk with you and, and I hope everything goes well for the family and, and yeah. all the endeavors. Uh, make sure you stay uh, ducking that coronavirus because it is real.